Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to share with you the five best arch starter tames. And just before we get into it, make sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel. In at number five is the Stego. Now, I would definitely classify this thing as a starter tame. And in this video, I'm going to be classifying anything that can be tamed under level 50 very easily as a starter tame and the stego definitely falls into that category you can probably tame this thing very easily around level 20 and it is an absolutely insane berry harvester for how easy it is to tame if you're fast enough this thing simply isn't going to catch up to you and you can continue to trank it until it's knocked out in terms of method only tame one of these that is singled out from a pack as if you are taming one that is in a pack, the pack is going to come after you as soon as you start tranking the stego that you're trying to tame. And you can just get overwhelmed and lose absolutely everything. And we don't want that to happen, especially at this stage of the game, as it will make your progress so, so much slower. Once you do have the stego tamed, this thing is an absolutely amazing berry harvester, but also a pretty good combat creature as well. And if you're on a PvP server, this is actually a good tank as well. Turrets are going to do basically nothing to this thing as long as you are using the hardened plate. And talking of those plates, it has two other plates as well. The sharpened plate is best if you're doing combat or harvesting, and the heavy plate is better for other kind of harvesting like wood. In at number four is the carbenemies. Now, when you're a beginner, you may see these things on the beach and just be like, why would I want to tame one of these things? And also, why is their saddle so expensive? Trust me, that cementing paste actually isn't too bad to gather if you just put a bit of effort into it. And for taming one of these things, it is actually worth it. You can tame this thing at around level 10 by using a slingshot. You're not going to need tranks, but also don't tame a ridiculously high level as these things are buff when it comes to dealing torpor to them. They do have torpor reduction, so when you do hit them, make sure to not hit them on their shell. Also, once you obtain these things, these are great as well for doing any kind of low-end combat. These things can harvest meat in a pinch. But mainly what I would use these things for is using it as a water creature. As these things are really slow on land, but in the water, they're not actually too bad. And it is a very viable solution in the early game for getting oil and silica pearls. Trust me, they may not be useful at the moment, but in the later game, you will thank yourself for gathering all of those oil and silica pearls. The carb enemy is pretty much spawns everywhere, so you won't have trouble finding it. And the reason why it is so good as an underwater creature is you don't even need to go underwater to tame it. Now, you may have not experienced the arc oceans yet, but they are pretty vicious, so you try to stay away from them as best as possible, which is why the carb enemies is so good, as you don't even need to enter the ocean to have a good underwater tame. In at number three is the Pteranodon. Now you probably instantly know why this thing is on the list. In Ark, you should really try to get a flyer as soon as possible. And considering its saddle is unlocked at level 38, it does qualify for this list by quite a big margin. The only thing is about its saddle, it does take quite a lot of chitin or keratin. It takes 75 of it, so you may have to grind a bit to get that depending on your settings. But it is not too bad and it is definitely well worth the grind as the Pteranodon is an absolutely amazing flyer for the early game. Yes, it may not have the best stamina stat or the best weight stat in the game out of any flyer, but this thing definitely does excel in speed and ease of transport, as long as you do level up its weight enough. As for some lower levels, their weight is simply so bad, you cannot even carry anything around when flying on this thing. But considering you tame a decent leveled one, 
probably about 50 or over this thing is going to be great and it's going to make so much of a difference to your arc progress as now you can travel around the map without really having a risk of being killed as long as you're playing on pve on pvp you're not really safe anywhere and for beginners i would recommend pve before any kind of pvp play but i'm not going to be the kind of person to say only play pve you can play pvp if you want to as well in terms of use the pteranodon is actually quite useful in the early game for gathering metal yes its weight stat isn't amazing but it isn't too bad at gathering around 50 metal at a time and for this stage of the game that is perfectly fine for at least a couple of days of arc playing and at number two is the thyla now strictly this shouldn't count to the list as its saddle is unlocked at level 51 but it's so close to 50 i'm going to count it as this creature is going to make a massive difference to your arc journey yes a pteranodon is probably going to be your flyer at the moment when you're around level 50 but you're going to need a good small efficient land creature as well as you can't just get around everywhere in the sky also metal runs are a lot easier on a thyla than a pteranodon and considering how much damage it does and how many abilities it has for traversing mountains and just general tough terrain this thing is a great solution to that pteranodon low weight stat also on top of that its melee damage does have a bleed ability which means this thing can really pack a lot of damage this thing can easily kill gigas and trust me, it may not seem like it, but it is definitely possible if you have a high enough level Thyla. The only real downside is you have to tame these things in the Redwoods, and at this stage of the game, and really any stage of arc, the Redwoods is not a place you want to be in for that long, so definitely be careful when taming these things, and also be on the lookout. These things will be hung up in trees, and there they'll be ready to pounce on any enemy below them, make sure that's not you if you do spot one that you want to tame trank it from afar and then it will drop from the tree and then you can trap it or trank the rest of the way until it's tamed and finally in at number one is the baryonyx now this does qualify for the list as its saddle is unlocked at level 49 and by far this is the creature that is going to make the biggest difference on the list Yes, it may not quite have the mobility of something like the Thyla, but it has something else up its sleeve which the Thyla could never achieve. And that is, this thing is the best creature by far for doing any kind of caving. And caving is the route to progress in Ark. If you don't do the caves, you can't do the bosses on Ark. And if you don't do the bosses, then you can't complete the map. And you're missing out on a lot of tech engrams and a lot of elements that I'm sure you would enjoy if you actually had it. So that is why you really do need a Baryonyx. Also on top of that, its health does actually stack up pretty well. This thing can definitely put up a decent fight and it is also great for the underwater caves as well and it even has a special ability when pressing C on your keyboard it will do a spinning attack. Also did you know that that ability can stun creatures up to the size of a megalodon underwater so it definitely is powerful. Also this thing doesn't get stuck on everything in the arc world like a rex. And this thing definitely is not frustrating to use in any way. It is very agile, very quick, it has a decent health stat, and it has a very good melee stat. It wouldn't surprise me at all if you could absolutely demolish Gigas with a high level one of these. But like every good creature, it still does have a major flaw, which is it spawns in the swamp. And if you haven't experienced a bad thing in this swamp yet, you are definitely very lucky. Arc 7 best late game tames. In at number 7 is the Rex. Now this thing definitely does count as a late game tame. Its saddle is unlocked in the late 70s. This thing is definitely a tame worth getting. And it is great for bosses because it is a very balanced carnivore. 
Something like the Spino does deal more damage, but its health is terrible compared to something like the Rex, which is why the Rex is better for bosses, as it has really good health and a great melee stat on top of that, which means it can definitely attack and deal the damage needed, but it does have enough health to survive the fight. But there is one downside to the Rex as well, which is it gets stuck on a lot of things, and it isn't great at swimming as well but i doubt you're going to be using the rex for any swimming as it isn't an underwater creature but the fact that it does get stuck on a lot of things especially rocks it seems it is a bit annoying but in a boss fight you're not really going to get stuck on a lot but in just general travel on this thing that is something to definitely take in mind but all of the pros of the Rex really do outweigh this. This is definitely a great late game creature. And every Ark player should tame one of these. And if you don't know what creatures you want to defeat a boss with. Maybe just try it with some Rexes. And I'm sure it will go very well for you. Just remember to actually level up their health quite a lot. Because for a lot of the bosses they are going to need some health. <coughs> In at number 6 is the Therry. Now you may ask to yourself, why is the Therry higher on this list than the Rex? Well the Therry is also a great boss creature as well, but it has a lot more uses than just being a boss creature. The Therizino does a very decent amount of melee damage and it can definitely pack a punch in that department. But also on top of all of this, it is a great harvester of many resources as well. And even in the late game, you're always going to be chasing for more and more resources. This thing is great at gathering berries, wood, thatch, and fiber. And the fiber part is really important as you're always, always going to need fiber when you're playing Ark. So in that department, this thing is definitely a very useful tame. But every herbivore that is great for combat has one major flaw. If you have a carnivore, you can simply feed it meat and it will heal relatively quickly. But berries aren't going to do the same for a herbivore. You are going to need sweet vegetable cake. And let me tell you, sweet vegetable cake is not cheap. Meat is definitely far cheaper and still even more effective than sweet vegetable cake, so take that in mind when taming one. In at number 5 is the Megatherium. This thing is definitely a great late game tame and it is absolutely insane for defeating the Broodmother on the island and on any other map that the Broodmother is, but especially on the island as other maps may have other bosses included instead of just the Broodmother. If you haven't played Ark before, you may wonder why this big hairy beast is so good at defeating the Broodmother. And the fact is it has one special buff, which is absolutely insane. And it also makes it a great caving creature as well. When this thing kills an insect, it has a kind of rage buff where it will do insane amounts of damage to any kinds of insects. And the thing is, the Broodmother spawns loads of spider minions and those spider minions are insects and it will get the buff once it has killed one of these spider minions and that buff will then apply to the Broodmother making these things deal so much damage to the boss and also quickly eradicate all of the minions that the Broodmother spawns. Also, this thing isn't too bad of a harvester as well, and it is okay for doing transport, as it has a reasonable stamina stat and a reasonable amount of weight. Definitely a good versatility creature as well, and you might want to consider that when taming one. As you can see here, this is what the buff looks like in person. In at number 4 is the UT, yet another great boss creature. I swear not all of the creatures on this list are just great for bosses, but this really does deserve to be on this list as it is an essential arc tame if you are trying to be successful in any boss scenario. 
Now you may think, what is this going to play in a boss arena? The Rex is doing all of the damage. What is this thing going to do? It's just a worse version of the Rex that has a little bit more hair. Well, to that, I will tell you the UT is an essential creature for giving your dinos even more damage and making the enemy deal less damage, as this thing has two special roars. The first being a fear roar, which will debuff the enemy, and if they're small enough, they will also run away. But then the more commonly used, more important, courage roar which will buff your creatures and again debuff the enemy and against all of the other buffs that you will probably have in a boss arena this is just going to elevate it to that next level and make it so much more likely that you are actually going to defeat the boss that you're fighting these things are just simply so so good for bosses and give you so much of a higher chance of defeating it that these things definitely should be tamed by you and not overlooked and they definitely work great paired with the deodon in at number three is the rhino nether now did you expect this on the list comment what you think down below but either way this is arc's most recent creature and it spawns on the island and the lost island so it is not locked behind a paywall and if you were wondering about the spawn locations they are on screen now now these things are incredibly rare which is why i use a mod called creature finder deluxe to actually find rhino ganathas but if you still can't find any rhinos you can always increase your dino count or use the command destroy wild dinos to dino wipe that world and then essentially it will respawn all of the creatures back in just make sure to put wild into that command as you do not want to kill all of your tamed creatures but once you have found yourself a rhino how exactly are you going to tame it and the reason why this thing is also just so so good is its taming method is so inventive as well obviously that doesn't make the tame any better but it is definitely fun to tame firstly you're going to need to kill a male rhino ganatha and take out its pheromone then you're going to need to source yourself a tamed bronto and have all of the resources on the screen about five seconds ago if you want a hundred percent effectiveness then essentially you are going to get off your mount once you found it you're going to net gun it and then you're going to deal a lot of damage to it and get its health as low as physically possible i am using a mod called awesome spyglass just to make it a bit easier so i can see its health but you can always use the magnifying glass if you so choose then once its health is really low you're essentially just going to have to wait for it to get out of the net gun and you may need to deal a bit more damage into it so it doesn't gain too much health then you're going to want to feed your bronto the pheromone and then you have to wait for it to come out of the net trap that you have just put it in again you may still need to deal more damage then it will impregnate your dino and this is where you're going to need those foods for the cravings that were on screen earlier then xenomorph style this thing is going to pop right out your creature and be tamed in at number two is the giga now this has been in arc for a while now and it is well known for its late gameness and it's absolutely insane damage and overpoweredness. Obviously, it's not going to rack up to something like the Titanosaur. But that is not really a good late game tame. As it isn't really worth taming at all. As there is just too many things and too many creatures that have come after it. Which means it is practically useless nowadays. Either way, the Giga is an absolute beast. Definitely worth taming but I probably would not recommend taming this thing on a map like the island. Definitely look to tame a Giga on Ragnarok, as they are just so much more abundant in the highlands. But if that isn't an option, then you're just going to have to search for a while, as yes, these creatures are again quite rare. But once you have found one, you're going to need to take real caution in taming one, as these things deal a lot of damage and can instantly kill most creatures pretty quickly but once you've tamed one using an obscene 
amount of Trank darts. I would not recommend Trank arrows. And then you fed it an obscene amount of narcotics and fed it loads of meat and it's tamed. You have yourself an absolute big hunking beast. This thing deals so much damage and has a really great health stat, but just a really terrible stamina stat that is not worth leveling at all. The Giga is always going to have bad stamina. Also, they do have a rage meter, which means once they've been dealt enough damage, they will kick you off and kill you. So be careful. In at number one is the Carcodontosaurus. Now the Giga would have been number one on this list, until the Carcharodontosaurus came out. This thing is essentially the Giga, but better, and everything that was wrong with the Giga is now improved. For instance, this thing's stamina doesn't suck. Yes, it's not great from the start, but it actually is worth leveling now, and it has a decent amount of speed and agility, even if its animation does look a little bit derpy in my opinion. But either way, this thing has a much more interesting taming method than the Giga, and it also doesn't require an absolute ton of tranks. It actually doesn't even require any tranks at all. Firstly, you're going to need to locate one, probably in the Highlands biome on Ark Ragnarok. Then you're going to need to drag dead creatures to it, and it is going to eat it. I would definitely recommend wearing ghillie for this. Then after that, it will have a bar above it, which will eventually turn from blue to green. Then you can ride it and just absolutely decimate loads of creatures until it's tamed. The bigger it's going to give a higher percentage of taming. But just be careful, if it is dealt enough damage, it will lose a lot of effectiveness. And once you tame this thing, you have an absolute beast that deals loads of damage and has a wealth of great abilities on top of a really nice health pool. But anyway, that is going to be the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Did you agree with this list? If not, comment your top 7 in the comments down below. And I will see you all later. Bye.